Kumba <laughs> Iron Ore. Yes, now this is a real Two story. Two days later, we had we had a report out about the iron ore prospects in South Africa, so that yes. we can double iron ore uh, production in the country under the right economic growth scenarios. So those terrible people at Kumba got their own guy, whose name is uh, Robert Stillman. Robert Stillman, who is from one of those research associate organizations, to write up why it is that the cheap iron ore shouldn't be given to anyone in particular and that it should just be something that Kumba gets the opportunity to export as much as they like. Yes. Obviously, from their point of view, they think that's a great outcome. And what they're saying is interesting is that if somebody gets cheap iron ore in this country, all they're going to do is make super profits. The price of steel in the economy is still going to be the same because that'll be based on import parity alternatives. Exactly. The whole point of ArcelorMittal getting um, iron ore at cost plus three was to pass it on to the consumer, which we actually Never didn't happens. see. Never happens. And if it gets given to another party, an empowerment yes. consortium or other, they're not going to give it to the consumer either. They're going to eat the money. So I guess so the question the becomes, the story, well, you know, I mean, in any modern economy, you're supposed to have open rules and transparency. We know our context requires a specific kind of intervention. So yes. maybe what's going to happen is someone's going to get the benefit. But, you know, it doesn't seem like a well thought through thing to me. Did you say Pakistan at 100 over 100, they start collapsing? Yes. Uh, 118 for four is where we're at right now. So it's not looking so hot. Not looking so they're so going to have to dig deep. <laughs> but this is where we've had the tournament. Normally, these Indian wickets start to get a bit tired yes. towards the end of the innings and then things start to get exciting. But I think a India Sri Lanka final come weekend would be great. These are the subcontinental power teams. So good luck to them all. The man with the, the most <laughs> dashing bow tie. Jim ah, Rogers. Your friend Jim yes, Rogers. <laughs> talking uh, to CNBC Asia this morning yes. and uh, essentially uh, talking about the fact that he, he likes Japan. He was going to buy Japan just before the disaster happened. This just gave him an opportunity. Uh, bought the yen. So he thinks also saying, nuclear power. And the when you can. Yes, exactly. The nuclear power story as well. So he reckons in the short run there's going to be a requirement in Japan for more fuels, diesel fuels and others to meet the shortfall. But in the long run, I think he's quite positive about nuclear power, talking about how mm -hmm. it's going to make a major contribution there and elsewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you know, of course, that uh, Jim Rogers is as crazy as a bed bug. Eh? I mean, he's not serious mainstream economic commentary. He's the funny little guy with a board. Know, but a I love the comment when he said, yeah, you know, a uranium might be out of fashion for one, two, five, ten years. I was like, wow, that's quite Look, a long... Look, he's a commodity <laughs> bull, and he's been big on this thing. He wrote one of the great books about discovering commodities long before yes. anybody else did. He lives in Singapore. He's extremely negative. You'll remember him railing on, on CNBC a year and a half ago about... You know, Ben Bernanke is an idiot, he's nuts, and you know, we know where we are now is that the whole system has calmed down and so on. So, I don't know. I With mean, the debt overhang and possible looming inflation yeah, yeah, and that. printing lots of money. Okay, <laughs> just so that we're on the same page. So, here, he Paul. reckons the U.S. is finished, even though he's an American himself. Yes. His children are learning Mandarin. You know, he's one of those people who likes to stick it out there. I don't think he manages any serious money apart from his own. And if you'd followed his advice and gotten out of everything to do with the U.S., you would have missed this enormous rally back up in U.S. So you wouldn't be prices. following his advice right now. Do not buy the Rinmin. He makes for great TV. You know, he comes on and he rants and rails and says Just things like that are colorful. <laughs> you don't want to be paying any attention okay. to what he says. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ADP figures. Actually, before we get into a ADP figures, IMF mm. cutting growth forecasts. U.S. GDP growth has been cut to 2.8% from 3 uh, in 2011. And Jap Japanese growth also cut down. Uh, from 1.6 to 1.4 percent. What are they saying about global growth? Um, I don't have that. Because I think Eurozone they were at like four, and four and a half. And Eurozone, interestingly enough, was raised to 1.6 percent from 1.5, um, and then the likes of China remains at 9.6 percent and slowing to 9.5 yeah. in 2012. But for me, I'm interested in what happens when you put it all together. So yes. clearly, the U.S. has been through a tough time. Europe. You know, different policy responses. Should we be looking at the economy that contributes the biggest chunk to, to global yeah, growth? As well, opposed what to you looking want is the total net economic outcome. Yes. And we're talking equity markets here. So you've got to look at who's going to be positively affected. Clearly, there are banks in the U.S. that will continue to struggle. There are retail and consumer organizations in Europe continue to struggle. But what's the total net economic picture, particularly for our global multinationals that make up these index constituents? So I don't want to talk down the IMF's contribution to world peace, 
<laughs> but I don't think one should be getting negative about that. And ADP, 201,000 jobs created in the private sector. Consensus was 208,000 jobs. And leads us into Friday when yes. we're going to have the non farm payrolls number, which is on the 1st of April. Sounds dangerous to have something on April Fool's Day. <laughs> but we're thinking positive number, big positive number, continues to justify the market's northward move, which we're enjoying at the moment.